jujitsu session number two. submissions when you're like this. The first thing I need to do is I need to get this elbow on this side of his head. I want to tuck here. And I want to use my elbow to get it in this tight. Isolate his arm. Slide his head up the ramp. Put my elbow inside of my knee control. I like to grab hold here and I like to pull that in nice and tight. When I pull that in nice and tight, I like my elbow to slide against the rib cage. Just like this. It's okay. If you're here, it's okay. You can adjust in a moment. But what I can do is just walk my elbows close together in, in towards his body. And then I'm going to walk my elbows in towards him and closer to each other. And even try to squeeze my, slide my hand down to between the shoulder and bicep. Most people fall. So that's what I want to show you. And I want to show you additional positions. Thank you, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Lock it up. Ribs. Ribs. Elbows down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create space. Watch how. Here. Here. Now I'm one leg. For, yeah, one leg, and now I'm gonna go. I'm gonna find a certain spot. You'll know it when I find it. I barely have to touch, and you don't fit leg. Yeah, it's not comfortable, is it? No. So what I want to do is I want to take you this way, and you'll feel the difference. So take guys and take them here to here. They're strong at the hip. They want their elbow by their hip. They're weaker here, and you get all this tension built, so everything hurts more. Let's go. Roll off. See how that bicep slice is a little easier to find? Oh, yeah. And then if you automatically take me up near my ear or higher up, yeah, big difference. Nice. Yep. And I'll go ahead and tighten everything up first. Take your time there. I'm not going anywhere. The only thing people are going to try to do is get trying to go for a half bar by getting underneath your legs. Doesn't matter. You're still going to finish it. See how many people with his hands? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. You want to annoy your opponent. It's super annoying, bro. <laughs> You made me pay for my attempted body triangle. Good 
good attempt. That was good. Half guard. Okay. You'll be there so much. So wait, hold on. Am I in half guard or are you in half guard? We both are. We're in top half, I'm in bottom oh, half. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so this is almost like a neutral position. You have a slight advantage. Yeah, good. Pin that arm. That was sweet. That was sweet, yeah. yeah. So move, counter, move, finish. Last roll. And I hope I didn't put that on fast or hard. I was, no, you were good. Those hurt me, so I put them on very slow on people. Great way to get to top cross. Yes, yes, that's exactly what I was going to tell you next. I was actually just going to escape, teaching the hard way. <laughs> now, we have a problem, slow down. I want you to address the problem you have. Stop, stop. What is your problem? Your knee and my... Yeah, both of these. So what I would do is I'd first take your... It'll be your left hip. Yeah. I take your left hook, hip and I turn it inside of my knee. Yes. Now I would go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. need to be that of this. Now I'm not going to do so hot. Right. So just keep that in mind. There's the key to getting past that is just turn your hips. Like pivot them a little bit and you don't right. slide right past. Now remember, you can finish your core with my arm straight. Don't even ignore my arm. Finish as if I tap. You can you can get it straight or back with the with the diagonal kimura. You have so much power. I would never do that. Nice work. That's good for today. I just got done with my second jujitsu session. I was running late. I wasn't running late. I was running on time. But last minute, I realized, yo, I need a mint because we're rolling around. We're face to face. I didn't want this poor guy to smell bad breath. I brushed my teeth, but I hadn't eaten anything in a while. And I don't know what happens when I brush my teeth and don't eat something for a while. My breath gets stale. So I needed a mint. So I run into the gas station. I had some change. I don't have any cash on me. So I pulled like 85 cents out of my change drawer. That's all I could find. And I'm like, yo, I got to get some gum or mints. So I run in the gas station. I go to the mints. I'm looking at them all. Everything's a $1.69. Every single pack of gum, every single thing of mints, $1.69. So I'm like, what is going on? So I, I look for the smallest thing I can find. I find one with no tag on it, no price tag really tiny actually it's this little tiny normal Altoids one inch by two inches like the mini version and I grab it because I'm like dude it's Altoids there's nothing special about Altoids I bring it up to the counter and I'm in, I'm in the hood at this point there's like glass and the whole deal and I'm like how much for these he goes that's 89 cents and all I have is 85 cents on me and I could go back and get my card, but I didn't want to spend, I only need one stick of gum. So I literally had already run back to my car to grab a mask, like this was all, and I'm running late. I was running right on time, I didn't have a minute to spare. Then I pull over to do this. So I'm like, ah, I'm gonna be late. So I didn't want to be late. So I'm like, shoot, do you have anything that's cheaper? And I look under the thing and there's some big red gum. I said, how much for that? He said, 35 cents. This is super old and hard and crusty. So I paid 35 cents. Well, then I get to jujitsu and I look. Dude, I had stolen the mints. Freaking stole them. So I'm pulling into the gas station now, as you can see. I gotta go in here for turnips. Three hours ago, I stole a pack of mints. The guy probably knows it. Unreal, dude. followers who have asked yeah I'm on eight mile road right now you can't really see let me switch it around okay this is eight mile road I'm heading westbound I'm on the Warren side I'm about to turn around and go eastbound towards my house now I'm on the Detroit side of eight mile road so everything you see on the right here is Detroit everything you see on the left is Warren see that? Glad that debacle is over. Now I can debrief jujitsu. Today was pretty awesome. We did another two hour session with about 15 minutes of talking, catching up, stretching, maybe even 20 minutes. 
and then we got into it. We, we reviewed again the top cross into Kimura, the top cross into the bicep slicer, which is really more like a forearm slicer. You feel it in the forearm, but you use the bicep as leverage. And then we transitioned from the two, from bicep slicer to Kimura. And man, I'm so not used to these reps. I just gotta get reps. It's so cool to watch a master do it. He explains it so well, and we just move it inch by inch. You wanna master every little thing. That's what I did over and over and over. Did a lot on the dummy, and then we uh, I did it on him, and then we rolled. And I'm not gonna lie, for the first time in a long time, I a little bit of panic set in. I'm not a real panicky guy, but I don't like to be in situations where I don't have any way out. It's just a scary position to be in. And at one point, he weighs about 185 pounds if I had to, if I had to guess. He's about 185. And at a certain point, he was laying on me in the top cross. I was uh, bottom and all his, all his weight was on my chest and I straight up wanted to tap. I just wanted to tap because he was laying on me. He wasn't even executing a move. The thing is, he was explaining a move to me, showing me a move, explaining, this is what I'm gonna do here and what's gonna happen is you gotta creep your elbows out and as he's doing that, I can't breathe to the point where I started, I could feel my sweater choking me, but it wasn't. It's just the weight of the sweater felt unbearable. I even went like this to like loosen it from my neck because it felt like it was pressure on my neck. But really it was me trying to take deep breaths, but not having the ability to breathe right. It was super scary. And it just gives me more it just gives me way more respect for dudes who roll, who play jujitsu, because there's so many ways, there's so many discomforts in jujitsu. It's just like, you're dealing with so much at the moment of submission. It's more than just that wrist that's about to break. There may be three parts of your body that are super uncomfortable and feel like they're gonna pop out. And then if you have any underlying pain or underlying um, conditions or underlying discomforts or anxieties. And then the fact that he's laying on top of you, you can't breathe. You're struggling to breathe. Which means you're not thinking correctly. Because you can't breathe, your brain's not getting the oxygen. And he's just laying on you, he have, he's not choking you or nothing. And then you're on your back, right? So the blood's down in your body. You're losing blood in your hands because you're trying to wrestle with them. I'm telling you, bro. It's a pretty fantastic thing to be in. I enjoy difficult things. I enjoy doing things that scare me. Yeah, last week I was scared about the potential of what jiu-jitsu could mean or do. But now I had my first real I can't breathe moment. And you remember those things. And then I gotta say, like from last week after session, my hips were so achy because I had stretched them so much from being in that top cross and trying to use your knees, like kind of bringing your elbows to your knees in that position, kind of like a frog. Man, uh, my joints had never, hadn't been, you know, pushed that far in a long time. And on top of that, before I left for practice, I had bubble guts and um, I had jelly belly. So I was worried that I was gonna have bubble guts when I got to, uh, I ate a bunch of cereal and milk like an idiot. My mother-in-law brought some cereal and milk over and the kids were eating it and I ate a whole bunch, a bunch of crunch berries, Captain Crunch Berries. So that messed up my stomach. And I got there and I was just like, thank God, just thank the Lord I didn't have bubble guts at Jiu Jitsu. So maybe 
man, I learned a lot. And I got some video footage I'm gonna roll for you so you can see what I did today. And um, I also, I had him record it so that I could watch it and I could practice at home and drill at home. Great practice, I'm glad I did it. I'm better because of it. I'm frustrated that I'm not learning. You know what I mean? Like I'm totally learning. But I'm frustrated that I'm not completing things yet. We never really even moved on. But he wants me to master some things before we move on, and I, I, I get it. And when we rolled, you know, it's not at all like what we're practicing. It's like, it's, there's no dummy. It's it's a human who is wiggling around and trying to get out and moving and putting knees where you don't want them and, and elbows where you don't want them. If I, if, I, I guess I should sum up jujitsu. I could sum it up with one word, and it's frustrating. It's frustrating for you because you're trying to do something. The guy's being frustrating back to you. It's frustrating for him. Everything you do, it's like a chess move. But it's not like power moves. You know in chess where like, you'll move the queen and put, put him in checkmate? Most of jujitsu feels like you just moved your pawn one move over, and then he moved his, and then you move yours back, and he moves his back, and then you move yours back, and he moves his back, and you're like, this is deja vu, we've been here before. He does it again, you do it again, and he's constantly, you guys just like matching each other's moves. It looks like you're going nowhere. That's what, that's what it is so far. And I know that's part of the process. So I'm gonna embrace that and realize that that is progress. The fact that I'm acknowledging this and I'm seeing it, so I feel good. I'm completely drained. Rolling, dude, rolling is maybe the most tiring thing you can do. Rolling and wrestling. Wrestling was pretty tiring. But it's, it's um, throws you for a loop. Like it's deceiving because you're not throwing punches and strikes. It's more like graceful chess, graceful physical chess. And every time I did something, he would grab me and a little bit of panic would set in. I move my arm, he'd grab my wrist, and I'd be like, oh no, what is he gonna do? Is that wrist part of something? Is this sequence number one in an eight sequence turn of events where I'm gonna end up strangled? And then I get my arm out and I put my elbow somewhere and he puts his elbow in my armpit. And I'm like, oh no, this must be some wicked arm bar cobra, you know, snake bite maneuver. And then, and then you're exhausted from trying to survive. You're like, I'm just trying to stay alive. I know what he just did. Like if he were to pick his nose in the middle of us rolling, I'd be like, uh-oh, is, no is that a nose picker move? Is he setting me up? If he farted, I'd be afraid to move my face away because I feel like it's a trap. <laughs> oh, God. I wouldn't, I would not be surprised. Jiu-Jitsu makes you paranoid. I'm gonna lay down in bed tonight, my wife's gonna touch me and I'm gonna freak out like she's gonna try to get me in a rear naked or something. That'd be a naked rear naked. I will say though, it's refreshing. I roll around with a grown man who's like stronger than me. And then I come home and it's, I have like a hundred pound wife and three kids under 50 pounds. I feel like a king when I go home. I just frustrated myself for two hours. Now I'm gonna go home, there's nothing they can do to frustrate me. Anyway, good practice, glad I went. I'm beat. Can't wait to go home, hang out with the family, eat some dinner.